Yeah, hello, every hello, everybody. Let's pray. Let's start today training. Dear God, we give you thanks for this time. So please fill us with your Holy Spirit. May your kingdom come, may your will be done at this time. Please open our spiritual eyes. Give us deep understanding of the gospel so we can restore uh, like correct life of faith. And uh, in this time, you please heal us and prepare us for world evangelism. In the future, may we all do disciple, uh, disciple ministry, decide, uh, disciple ministry. And this time, fill us with your Holy Spirit, give us strength. May all the forces of darkness which are going to hinder us be broken down in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory, we praise your name. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Yeah, hello everybody. So today, God is giving us an uh, important word. So the topic is crucifixion. Crucifixion of old old man body of sin uh, cripple crippled or we can say paralyzed so the scripture is Romans chapter 6 from 6 to 7 let's find and read all together you can read in your own language Romans chapter 6 from 6 to 7 verse from 6 to 7 find and let's read out to, together so have you found let's read together for we know that our old self our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin, the body of sin, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Amen. So, um, all of you got called to be a minister. So you need to understand, uh, our church, First Mission Church, we are doing uh, disciple ministry, discipleship ministry, all around the world, and you and you need to have a message. Message to raise up disciples. Then God will give you meeting with disciples, and. Uh, Last time, this time, and next time, we talk about sin. So you need to have a clear understanding about sin. Sin. Usually when people think, I mean Christians and non-believers, when they think about sin, the first one is about self-committed sin. Self-committed sin. And it's seen about according to law. According to law. In our case, it's Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. But also there is like a country law. Your country law. And also people, they don't fulfill it. They, uh, they do some corruption. But the Bible talks about another one, about original sin. Original sin. We also, we call the sin hamartia. Hamartia. Hamartia, it is in Greek language. So, Paul, Paul, especially, especially, Romans from, chapter from 6 to 8, 
Paul, he talks very detailedly about this sin, this sin. Hamartia sin, Hamartia, original sin. So original sin, this is something everybody who was born after Adam inherited original sin. And after Adam commit sin, we call this original sin, he was passed down to all people. So mind, heart, even body became sinful. But usually people talk about, they think about these two sins, self-committed sin. I lied, I stole, I cursed, I did something not good. Self-committed sin is all about ethics, ethics. Or moral, morals, morals. Ten Commandments, you know, right? It's about like a loving God and love your neighbors. But the problem is here, Hamartia. Because of this original sin, Hamartia, people commit self-committed sin and sin according to law. Understand? That's why Paul, Paul, he talks about this sin. Because this is priority, priority. If you can solve this sin, these two sins will be solved automatically. But these days, we have a problem with believers. Believers, they are shaking in their face. In the face. Why? Even believers, they receive salvation, they still do this self-committed sin as sin according to law. So in Ten Commandments, God He said, do not do not desire, do not wish as a person belongings. Don't, don't look with uh, strange thinking to another woman. Don't steal, don't lie, like that. Are you doing this? Of course we can do it. And we we do self-committed sin. It's about you know, it's about like a dirty, dirtiness, dirtiness. Dirtiness means we were all born in this world. So the dirty things of this world, they influence us. So culture, habits, we have our bad character. And even Christians receive salvation but because of these two things, they're shaking. They're shaking in the life of faith. Am I saved? Or I lose salvation? Something like that. Some, some people, some Christians, they say, Oh, you receive salvation. No need to repent. Mm, like that. It's also it's misunderstanding. We have to repent. And... Uh, uh, some people say, oh, committing sin, committing these two sins, no problem, it's fine, you're already saved, don't worry about it. It's also it's a misconception. That's why I, you need to help many believers in the future. So last time we talked about repentance. By the blood of Jesus Christ, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we receive salvation from original sin and Ahead of time, God he forgave and self-committed sin and our sins according to law. But because we are, sometimes we are committing these two things, we need repent, repent. Repent, it's about what? It's about get rid of guiltiness, guiltiness. 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 And plus Purified. You need to be purified. So we talk first John one nine. When we committed sin, we need repent. And then God He forgive He forgive us and He purify us. Then you can get rid of guiltiness, guiltiness. I said last time, many people there because of guiltiness they, they don't worship. 
They say, oh, like, uh, how God can look at me, like, uh, I need to be more perfect like that. They don't go to worship. It's a big mistake. We need to repent. Repent, but it's not about receive salvation again. Don't misunderstand. Repent, it's about get rid of guiltiness. And then God, he will purify me. Understand? This is very important. And uh, also, you need to understand, even believer receives salvation, still believer, he needs healing. Healing. Because we have our old imprint, roots, and our nature. Because of this three, we still commit self-committed sin, we, uh, we don't fulfill the law because of this. That's why we need to go to the training. training. Why do we need training? We need training to receive healing from these three. Understand? Because the more you go to training, the more you can receive the answer of Galatians 2.20. It's no longer me, but Christ lives in me. Christ. So what is a sanctifi uh, sanctification? Sanctification. What is a holiness? Holiness, it is this. Know me. Know me, but Christ lives in me. Christ. The same for you. If you just receive grace on Sunday, it's not enough. Look at Jesus. Our Lord Jesus. For three years, he was together with disciples. What did Jesus do for three years? He was healing them. The wrong thinking, imprints, root nature like that. Understand? Look at the uh, Apostle Paul. He also, he did the same. If you look at the book of Acts, you can find three Sabbath or three months. Three months. Or two years. Or one and a half year, like that. So, Paul, according to condition of disciples, he was training them. Understand? The same, if you look at the Bible, Bible, you can find a lot of scripture about river, river, or uh, uh, river, and then mountain, mountain, or desert, desert, okay, or uh, David, he was, where did David was, Pastor Alfonso. David, he was a no, no, he was a shepherd. Where shepherd? So, so you can find like a shepherd, shepherd, yeah, yeah. So, why is it? Why do these things happen? Because it's concentration, concentration. So, Jesus, in a concentrate way. He was healing disciples. How? He was planting gospel in them. So the same for you. You also, you are not perfect. Okay? I apologize to say it, but you also, you have your egoism. Egoism. Individualism. Then your assertiveness, assertiveness. You really stress your own opinion, assertiveness. We all have this greed, greed. Okay, okay. We all have this uh, like a corrupted, corrupted nature. Corrupted nature. Maybe we don't know, but every each of us we have our country traditions, traditions, traditions. So we can say culture, culture. When we were growing up, we, we received many scars from people, from parents. Then we have our bad habits. We have our 
not good character. Character. What else? We have our diseases, diseases. Already, we have some mental, mental diseases, mental diseases. So, man, you know, a man, it's like a, okay, I don't know. A anyway, so, this is inside of us, this is inside of us. That's why Satan, he using this, he using this. And because of this, we commit self-committed sin. Understand? Uh, you need to understand, what is sin? What is sin? Sin, it is this. me centeredness. This is the biggest sin. This is Genesis chapter 3. This is sin. And because of this, Satan is attacking man, and man is committing sin. So we see, we say, this is old me, old me. Old me, old me. What me? Self-centered me. Physical material centered me. Worldly success centered me. It's all about old me, old me. Understand? That's why today Paul, he said that our old self has crucified. What does it mean? We need, as a Christians, as a safe people, we need to restore correct relationship with Christ. Which one? What is acceptance? I no longer master. Christ is my master, Christ. And I, I, I am his servant. I, I am his servant. So from now on, I rely on Christ, I serve Christ, I obey Christ's word, Christ's will, Christ's commandment. Understand? This is a new me, this is a new me, new me. New me. If you have this condition, this spiritual state, Satan, he cannot attack you, he cannot. Why? Because Satan, he cannot attack Christ. And about you need to understand Paul he said uh, if you look next Roman chapter 6 verse 12 Paul he said therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so you uh, so that you obey its evil desires verse 13 do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. So, my point is here. You need always remember about the Distribution process, distribution process of sin, process of sin. So, please remember, uh, before that, let me explain you. Cross of Christ, cross of Christ really has a power, power, power. 1 Corinthians 1, 18, it says, the cross of Christ is power to, to believers. Why is it power? Because through the cross of Christ, we received three graces. Three graces. What are they? Number one, by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ, first, we received forgiveness. Forgiveness. Of all sin, all sin, all sin. What does it mean, all sin? First, it's about original sin. Original sin. It means sin of separation from God. Sin of not knowing God. Sin of living without God. Sin of being a master of my life. This is what we call original sin. We received 
forgiveness. Why? Because now Christ is the master of our life. We have correct relationships. So we don't have uh, original sin anymore. Number two, we talk about self-committed sin. Self-committed sin. We also receive salvation. Please remember, your past committed sin. Even present sin you do right now. Even future already Christ's blood has forgiven everything. And number three, it's a sin according to law. Even we commit some sin according to law, we need repent. Repent. About two and three to receive forgiveness, uh, to receive, uh, like, get free from guiltiness and be purified. So this is a grace number one. Grace number two. Today we read, old myself has died. Old me died with Christ. Old me. Which one old me? We call this self-centered me. Self-centered me. Physical, material centered me. Centered me. And worldly success centered me. We call this old me, correct? Look at people, of, look at non-believer. They don't care about God. They think only about me, me, me. I'm a master of my life. I do what I want. I fulfill my desire. I, I make a plan. I achieve it. It's all about me. Then look at non-believers. They don't care about worship, spiritual things. Why? Only physical, physical. Money, money, money. And they don't want to live for God's glory. They don't want to serve Christ, glorify Christ, obey Christ. No. They want to glorify themselves. Fame. Success. Reputation. It's about worldly success. So that old me has died. Understand? This is what we call correct acceptance. What is, correct, what is acceptance? It is changing, changing. Master of my life. Changing master of my life. I no longer master. Now Christ is my master. Christ is my master. So this is what we call acceptance. This is what we call salvation. So this old me has died. Another word. Correct relationship. Correct relationship with Christ have been restored. With Christ and with God. Restored. Understand? This old me died. And number three. Today we read, not only old me, it means not only my corrupted nature. This is corrupted nature. Corrupted sinful nature. Not only this died, but also my body of sin. Body of sin is also died. Look, we receive salvation, but still we have this body, right? Try not to worship one week. You will become very, very physical. Understand? Our body is bad body. Our body is sinful body. But today, Bible said, our body of sin is dead. But we are breathing, we are talking. How, what does it mean it's dead? It means, according to sin, our body crippled, crippled. Paralyzed, paralyzed, crippled, understand? So, yeah, we have our body. But when this body want to commit sin, Paul, he said, you need to remember, by the blood of Jesus Christ, in other words, by the death of Jesus Christ, your body is, has died as well. So your body of sin has died with Christ on the cross. Yeah, maybe we can understand it by faith, because Christ, he was living 2,000 years ago. But by faith, Paul, he said, consider yourself, consider. You need to consider that my body is also died. If you think like that, then the power of blood of Christ work upon you and your body will not commit sin. Last time I told you, if this hand want to steal something, you need to imagine, you need to consider, you need to proclaim, 
this hand has died. Can that hand move? Cannot move. This week I was thinking like that. Every time I want to curse someone, every time I want to criticize someone, I need to consider that my mouth has died. Every time I want to book, for example, kick someone, or like a injure, like a yeah, hurt someone, I need to consider this body has died. Why we do not revenge? Why we do not curse? Why we don't do adultery? Why? Because according to sin, this body cannot do sin. His body paralyzed, paralyzed. Have you seen paralyzed person? He just lay down. He can only like a click by the like a click by his uh, eyes. That's all. He cannot move. And then that's why today Paul he says the same. You are dead according to sin, according to old nature, and according to your body. You need to consider like that. Why consider? Charisma, charisma. If you look at the uh, etymology, etymology it means where does this word come from? Charisma means has a meaning. It's about order of the king. Order of king. So in the past, you know, right? When king said, do it, everybody has to obey. Okay? If king decided to kill someone, that person has no choice. He will die. Why? Because it's order. You have to obey order. So it's the same. What is the charisma? Charisma, this is, uh, we call this proclaimed gospel. Proclaimed gospel. Proclaimed gospel. What kind of gospel, what kind of gospel we believe in you? Uh, we believe with you. We believe in this gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 5. According to scripture, Christ died for us, died, was buried, and a, uh, was uh, like a resurrect, he resurrected, resurrected in three days, and then he appeared, he appeared to twelve to 12, and we know that Aurelia, like a, he at 12 to 500, 500 people. So this is the gospel we believe, okay? Also, you can look Romans 5, 8. When we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But very important is this, died for us, died. When Paul talk about died, let's read together Romans 6, chapter 4. Let's read together. This is important. Many Christians, they don't understand meaning died. That's why still sin, they are alive. Their sinful nature is alive. That's why they are suffering. So let's read together Romans chapter 6, verse 4. We were... Uh, ah, so let's read from verse 3. From verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of Father, we too may live a new life. So today here Paul talk about unification, unification. Unification with Christ. In other words, when Christ died, I, together with Christ, I also died. Who me? Who died? That old me. Me, me. This sinful me. Understand? This you who like sexual cravings, fame, this uh, false worldly values, physical stuff, uh, like a self-centered, physical center. All this you has died. And when Christ was raised from the dead, I, 
in Christ received new life and I was resurrected also with Christ. So it means there is no old me, there is new me, new me, new me. And then what kind of new me? We talk. It's about Galatians 2.20. Now there is a new me in whom Christ reigns. And then uh, now it's a new me. So let's read together Romans chapter 7 from 6 to 4. Uh, from 4 to 6. Go to the next chapter, Romans chapter 7, verse from 4 to 6. Have you found? Let's read together. So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order we might bear fruit of God. So, we were uh, in the realm of flesh, the sinful passions arose by the law were at work in us, so that the, uh, we bore fruit of death. Verse 6, but now by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we will serve in the new way of the spirit. And the old way of the written, uh, and not in the old way of the written code. So here is important, verse 4. What me? Me who belong to Christ now. So there is a new me. My mind, my heart, my body parts, my talent, my time, my finances, all belong to Christ. Why? Now I may no longer bear fruit of death. I may, bore, uh, I may bear fruits of life. So let's go to the 1 Corinthians. Go to the 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 19 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. I will read out. Do not know, uh, don't you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? We are not own. We are not your own. Uh, you are not your own. We were bought at price. Therefore, honor God. Uh, uh, honor God with your bodies. So now, my body shouldn't bear fruits of death, but my body should bear fruits that glorifies our God, that honors God. And then, so it means, it means. Died with Christ means two things. My old me, my old me, this corrupted sinful nature, this me-centered, physical centered, success, worldly centered, this me has died. Now there is a new me. We say unification. What new me? New me in whom Christ reigns and my body now should bear fruits that honor God, that glorifies God. Then we can bear fruits of life. So let me explain you. What does it mean? Fruits of death, fruits of life. Every time you go back to your sinful nature, Satan works. And he makes you committed sin. As a result, you bear fruits of death. What does it mean, fruits of death? Have you experienced... When you go back to the world, to your old culture, your old character, your old bad habits, and you commit sin, what do you, exp what do you feel? You feel absence of God's presence. Hmm? You, it's like you lost God's presence. You lost God's love, God's wisdom, God's, uh, God's power. You lost. Here... In your spirit, you feel you devastated, you empty. Understand? Paul, he said like that, that neither drunkards, neither adulterers, neither 
uh, some these worldly sins, they cannot inherit kingdom of God. Okay, Paul he said, First Corinthians chapter six, but especially uh, Pentecostal church believers, Baptist uh, like a Baptist, uh, how to say Baptist church, yeah Baptist church, they think like that. Oh, people who drunk commit sin, they don't go to hell. Uh, they don't go to heaven. They lost salvation. No. When, when, even if you're saved, if you do this stuff, you insist your own opinion, you fall into sexual cravings, worldly culture, fame, like that, you bear fruits of death. It means because of this, you are losing in your heart God's presence. There is no kingdom of God in you. You cannot experience God's power, understand? Spiritually, you become devastated, devastated. Very bad feeling. But when you use your body, you use your body to do the things that glorify God, praise, worship, evangelism, concentrating on message, meditation on message, memorizing gospel words, teaching others, helping others, then you bear fruits of life. It means that time, Holy Spirit works. At that time, you can experience God's presence, God's love, God's power. Understand? That's why Paul, he said, like uh, especially in 1 Corinthians, Paul, he writes a lot, of, uh, a lot about this stuff. Why? Because church in Corinth, they received salvation, but there were many world, worldly stuff in the, in the church. Adultery, uh, fighting, criticism, like that. That's why Paul, he said, Already Holy Spirit in you, you became temple of God. Now use all your body parts for what? For something that glorifies God. Understand? That's why maybe around you there are people who go to church, but they are spiritually, they are not growing. Spiritually, they are devastated. Why? Yeah, maybe they receive salvation, but still they don't change their identity. They live the same way how they lived before they accepted Christ. That's why they use their body, their body, not to go to deeper to God's grace, but use their body for what? To commit sin. As a result, no grace. They go to church, no grace. They fight with people in the church, out, out of church. They have conflicts, no spiritual growth, spiritually devastated. It's, it's normal that Christians, they drink, uh, some they do some sexual cravings. Why? They don't receive grace from God. Because they don't use their body to go deeper to uh, gr grace of God. Grace. And then, that's why you need to understand distribution process of sin. You can help many believers get rid of their old, them, old themselves and they can understand, ah, my body, it's not body to commit sin. This body to serve God, to glorify God, to put myself into grace. And if they start living like that, they will be revived. So what is the distribution process of sin? Please understand. Now we still have this hamartia, okay? Yeah, Christ he destroyed Satan on the cross. He forgave all our sin. But still this sin, sin, hamartia, he still is working. He still exists. Why? He will be exist. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. He will exist until Christ will come second time. Then Christ will destroy Satan and death. At that time, uh, until that time, he will exist. This hamartia sin. And Satan, he is using this sin, okay? That's why Satan, using this sin, he wants to control old me, old me, old me. For example, this is a new uh, non-believer, okay? This non-believer. Non-believer is self-centered, physical-centered, material-centered. This is old me, old me. Sinful me, sinful me. Then, Satan, he works through this sinful me, and this non-believer, he commits sin by his body. His body is body of sin. As a result, 
spiritual death. That's why the more believers they focus on money, stress, their own opinion, world culture, the more they getting far and far from God. The more. Why? Because the spiritual death, spiritual death. But this is the same for Christian. Christian receives salvation. Why? Because body, blood of Christ has a power. We already receive forgiveness of sin. Yeah, we are righteous. We are righteous one. But if still I go back to old me, do my egoism, uh, assert my will, greed, sexual cravings, fame, this worldly, uh, this strange culture, go to my old habits, character, I also, Satan works, and this sinful nature by my body, by this body, commits sin, sin. And as a result, spiritual death. I told you, right? Even Christians can experience absence of God's presence. I experienced it. Two years ago, I really fell into my bad habits. I experienced this. I really experienced like there is no God with me. Why? It is a spiritual death. And then, you need to understand, Hamart is working, working still. How to overcome it? You need to understand mystery of Christ. You've been united with Christ. It means this old you has died. Stop, be self-centered. Be Christ-centered. Okay? Follow Christ's will. Serve Christ. Then you can always experience God's presence, God's power, God's love. It means you can experience kingdom of God in you. And you will be happy because of this. But still, Satan, he's try, he, uh, he works. That's why Paul, he said, consider that all yourself has died. You died or you died, finished. Not only you died, also your body died, died, dead. Consider your body is crippled, crippled. For example, you have your body, by him, by this body, you can glorify God, right? You can do worship, prayer, prayer, evangelism. But when, this, when Satan is attacking your body to commit sin, like, for example, sexual cravings, about fame, about criticism, others, then consider, oh, my body is crippled, my, my, my body died. And then, then you will stop Stop the forces of sin. The forces of sin. Then, say this hamartia will be destroyed. Understand? This is a mystery. That's why I told you, we need help many, many Christians. Stop, uh, help them to stop forces of sin. Oh, you commit sin. Don't, don't worry, you are saved. No, 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 no. In this way, we neglect power of cross. No, on the cross already God gave us power to stop these forces of sin. It's very important. Okay? Because Satan, he still exists. The same. We have our body. If we want to commit, if we want to fulfill law, law, by, uh, by my body, by my assertion, by my strength, by my forces, also Power of sin activates, activates. You shouldn't commit law by your strengths. You should commit law by grace, grace. Understand? Especially when you do ministry. What is law? Now we have two law. Love your God, love God, and love your neighbor, right? Neighbor. So if you want to Really, be successful in worship, helping others, evangelize others. You shouldn't do it by your strengths. If you want to do by your strengths, oh, I need serve, I need help. You, by this thinking, you will activate power of sin. Why? Because you do it by your own efforts. efforts. This is my assertiveness. Me, 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 I do, I do. You can easily fall into arrogance, arrogance. Why? I do, I do. 
That's why especially there are people in the church, they do a lot. They are cleaning, they are cooking. But then they fall into conflicts. I am cooking, I am cleaning, why doesn't he do nothing? Many conflicts in church. Some people, without God's grace, by their own power, they do offering, offering. And then they fall into temptation. Oh, I did many offerings. Why, why didn't he do offering? What is that? It's, again, it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, arrogance, arrogance. Genesis chapter 3, me, me, me. I did it, I did it. I causes conflicts. I am good, he is not. I am perfect, he is not. And then that's why you need to do worship, evangelism. How? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Receiving grace from worship, you are filled with God's love. You serve others, you evangelize, you help. And then that's why Paul he said like that. We are, we are under the law of grace. Safe child of God, now not under the law. Do this, don't do this. We are under the law of grace. Now we need to receive grace to love God and to love our neighbors. That's why, if possible, before you do some social life, evangelism, ministry, always first receive grace. That's why a very important early morning prayer. When you, before you start your day, you receive grace. For example, you have important event, meeting. First, worship, worship by yourself. Receive grace. For example, you go for ministry. You want to meet someone, evangelize. First, worship by yourself. Receive grace. Then, this is a key. So, my friend, uh, today... I really want to tell you that we need to understand this. Christ died for us. What does it mean Christ died for us? Many Christians, they think like this. Yeah, Christ, he forgave my sin. Now I can go to heaven. Thank you, God. But still they are living as they lived before. It means they didn't understand. What does it mean Christ died for us? Christ died for us means unification with Christ. Me too died with Christ. What me? Old me, old me, self-centered me, physical-centered me, material-centered me. If you are still living this way, even you are saved, you will bear fruits of death. You will go to sexual craving, worldly culture, and you yourself, you will be dying. Because of this, you will lose God's grace. You will feel devastated. You will feel very bad. That's why God gave us low, low, low. Commit Sunday worship. Pray. Worship. Evangelize. Do forum. Give thanks. Why? Because all this low, he is making me go deeper to the grace. Grace. Understand? Satan, oppositely, he, he is pushing me towards old me, old me. Worldly stuff, culture like that. Yeah, you can do it. You don't lose salvation. But you will bear fruits of death. You cannot enjoy kingdom of God in your heart. It is very bad. I really experience what it means. Kingdom of God is like a, not in me. It's very bad. You can cry how bad it is. That's why. We need to understand, aha, uh -huh. now I have new relationship with Christ. No longer me-centeredness, world-centeredness, physical material centeredness. Now I am Christ-centered. I rely on Christ. I serve Christ by my body, by my finances, by my time, my talents. My family is for Christ. My body for Christ. And I will obey Christ. If Christ say, I will do. If Christ say, stop, I stop. If Christ said, run, I will run. So I have correct relationships. This is a new me. And this is the best me. It is the blessed me, strongest me, wiser me, more influential me, best me. That's why I told you, Galatians 2.20, best answer. Know me, but this is new me. Christ reigns in me. And now, important, how to stop 
forces of hamartia sin in my life. How to stop Satan's work on my body? Remember, your body has died. Body of sin. It's not what I say. This is a proclaimed gospel. Charisma, charisma. Charisma means order of king. So imagine, Christ himself is talking to you right now. Your body has died. Your body, mine. Your body, give as a weapon of righteousness from now on. Consider as Christ is talking to you. Understand? This is what we say, sermon, sermon. Proclaim gospel. It's charisma. It's about Christ's order. So today, through scripture, Christ, he tells you, consider your body of sin is dead. And every time Satan is attacking you to commit sin, to, do, to lose worship, to criticize someone else, then consider, ah, my body has died. I cannot criticize. I cannot commit sin. I cannot not to go to worship. This body died, died. It's crippled, crippled. And then... Uh, I, I met many people who receive healing from addiction. Why? Be one day they understood this. Oh, this addicted body has died. And then forces of sin stopped. And the people, they receive healing, they are serving the Lord, they do like ministry. How is it possible? Because they understand this mystery. Unification with Christ. So, conclusion. Important conclusion. This understanding must bring us to conclusion. What conclusion? As I told you, we are saved. But still we have wrong imprints, roots and nature. In other words, still we have old me. How can I change it? Training. Training. Please remember, church It's not about uh, life of faith. It's not about Sunday. Life of faith, it's about every day walk, live with Christ. That's why I told you, Jesus, three years, he spent time with his disciples. He lived, he slept, he ate, he evangelized, he fed, he fed people, he healed people, three years. The same, Paul, he spent time with disciples, sometimes three, three weeks, three months, two years like that. And training, training, it's all about concentration. That's why in the Bible you have a lot of rivers, desert, mountains, some uh, like a beach, like that. Why? It's all about concentration, concentration. That's why very important is Psalm 119.11. Let's read together. Psalm 119, verse 11. Have you found? L let's read together. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So, to, to receive spiritual healing... To stop forces of sin, to come of understanding in this, in this question, what should we do? We need to have a concentration time. Concentration time when we put in gospel in me. This is the key. How to receive healing, how to maintain life of faith, how to be strong, how to get ready as a disciple of Christ. That's why, if possible, I told you, before you do doing something, before you do something, write down prayer, prayer. Not pray in yourself, write down. Why? Because we have a different kind of memory. When you write down, it really penetrates to your brain. Write down. For example, you have a class or work or meeting or you're talking. Write down prayer. And then 
when you do your stuff, you work, you, uh, you study, you meet someone, what to do? Seek, seek, seek. So what is prayer? You are seeking God's blessings. For example, you met some, you are meeting someone. You are listening to this person, but in, inside, in your mind, you are seeking God. What, what have you prepared in this meeting? Okay? God, what do you want to tell me through this person? You are seeking. What is a prayer? Prayer is seeking. Seeking God's blessings. For example, you are, talking, so you are talking about some churches, world politics. God, what do you want to teach me through this talking? So you are seeking, you are seeking, seeking God's blessings. God's answers. Then you will be surprised. God will give you answer. God will give you realization. God will teach you teaching. You will be shocked. It's just a lesson. I thought it's like a, just a lesson, but I received important answers through this lesson. You just thought, oh, well, I will meet this person briefly. But you met him, you understood important things. Why? Because Holy Spirit who is with you, he will teach you everything. Then you can really live with God 24 hours. This is how I was studying at the university. Usually when Christians go to university, they lose faith. Why? Because at the university you can find a lot of professors who are teaching evolution theory, they're making fun of church, they're neglecting believers. But in my case, my faith grew up in, in, at the university. Every time I was receiving le lessons about history, history, psychology, like, uh, psycholo uh, psychology, especially physiology, our body is the best evidence of creator. Physiology, especially politics, especially philosophy. Always I was confirming gospel. Correct, correct. This is a, it's written in the Bible. It's written in the Bible. So my faith grew up because of university. Why? Because I was receiving my lecture with prayer. And then? That's why you need to have this rhythm, rhythm. When you do everything with prayer. For example, you have five lessons a day. You can pray five times and you can receive five answers. Can you imagine if you live the, uh, your life the, like this, you will, your life of faith will be grow up. And then, number two, you really need to have time when you concentrate on gospel. Concentrate on gospel. Not just read Bible, I mean gospel. Gospel word. You really need to have time when you meditate. Meditation. When you recite. When you write down. When you memorize Bible verse. Memorize Bible verse. When you do forum, what you understood with others. Especially when you uh, do workshop. For example, you present gospel message to someone else. You need to have this time. We say this is a separate time, separate time. Uh, in our church, September 29, 28th, 29th, we will have intensive training. If you have time, participate. We have English translation. So you really need to have time of concentration. It means training, training. If you cannot like, join someone, do it alone. In my case, I do have this time when I do my ministry. Because I am a minister, I need to prepare messages. I need to repeat messages, listen, organize. So that time, it's my concentration time. In my case, always when I do sport exercise, it's about maybe five years, I don't listen any music when I do sport exercise. I always listen message, message. Especially Sunday message, especially training message. Especially when you have your free time. For example, you're riding your car. You need two, three hours to get some place. You have three hours. Then use this time, concentrate on gospel message. And gospel message, Hebrew, Hebrew 412, 
this message is living and he will penetrate to your brain, to your muscles, to your soul, to your spirit, and he will heal you. And then, that time, God, he will teach you, give you some important, important understanding, answers, re revelation. And then, if in your church there are some broken people, spiritually broken, help them to stop and guide them to this training. This is how can we heal people. This is how can we raise up disciples. It's not me. I told you, look at the Bible. Three years, two years, like uh, 40 days. Jesus, he took disciples on the Mount of Olives. Ten, uh, 40 days. For example, Moses, he was in the desert 40 years. So always we, ha we, we have duration. Duration is about concentration. So in my case, I really receive all answers through trainings. By the grace of God, 2015, I came to Korea. Right away, I joined this church. In, in Korea, we have two times when we have uh, holidays. Nobody works. We have intensive training. That time, oh, I never skip even once training. Because of this, I found myself to be a pastor. I found my vision. Now I know what to do for, for the rest of my life. And still, I keep doing this. Kill. Why? Because if I don't receive grace, even if I don't want to, I go back to my old nature. And then, Satan is using my body to commit sin. I know myself. I know myself. That's why I understand I cannot live without grace, even a day. The same for you. If you have bad habits, you have your weaknesses, diseases, poverty, go deeper to the gospel concentration even more. Even more. So, please, have correct understanding about sin. Yeah, we receive salvation, but this sin, Hamartia, still exists until the second coming. But by the grace of God, we already received forgiveness of sins and our old me and my body died. Consider like this, and from now on, use your body. First, don't be self-centered anymore. It's a damage to you, okay? The more you insist your will, the more you fight with people, the more you fall into bad habits, it's damage to you. You lose kingdom of God in your heart. It's a very bad, very bad. And from now on, use your body only for something that glorifies God. Praise Worship, thanksgiving, preaching, teaching, evangelism, missions, only for this. Then you will bear fruits of life. You will live and you can save others. You can heal others. This is, the, this is what God called us for. So today is a very important topic. Uh, next week we will finish talking about sin. So I believe... God will give us an important message for next week. Let's pray and let's finish. Dear God, we give you thanks for this time. So please, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us uh, deep understanding of the unification of Christ. From now on, help us to enjoy our new identity. We are forgiven. We are purified. We are no longer sinners. We are righteous one. And now we are Christ-centered. And help that we can use our body only as a weapon of righteousness. And through us, may many people can be saved. Many people can be healed. Many disciples can be risen. Also bless African country, bless India. Gospel can be restored and relayed in those countries. We give you thanks. Also uh, bless our forum. Help us have a more deep understanding. We give you glory in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I will ask Pastor Alfonso to lead the forum. Hi to everyone. If you are online, can you please turn on your video? Hello again. 
Akien, on the C2 project. Okay. Can we please share our forum briefly? We'll start with the lady first. Welcome. Judy, can you please share your forum? So, praise God. Amen. So, today 